Welcome back to the IE427 Garage, everybody. Today we're working on the 25th anniversary car and we're working on cooling. Cooling hoses, cooling expansion tanks, radiator, you name it. If it has anything to do with cooling, we're working on it today. everybody what I'm working on today is the cooling system on the 25th anniversary car and what I want to start with is the expansion tank um, besides the radiator it's probably one of the, the, the more important parts because it kind of needs to be set in place before you can start measuring cutting and placing all of the supplemental cooling hoses so you're going to have a bypass hose that goes from the expansion tank to the engine block. You're going to have one that is a, oh, what do we, kind of like a steam port vent from the radiator up to the expansion tank. That's just going to take any of the air pockets that may uh, reside inside the radiator and bleed them off into the expansion tank. And then there's one other bleed type vent coming off the top of the engine cooling system. And I think that's just to kind of do the same thing. Take any air that might be caught in that loop inside the engine and bleed it off into the expansion tank. So let me take you over there and we'll take a look. I've got it all mounted. I fabricated a bracket. I still have to fabricate a lower bracket support, but um, I'll probably do that when I'm working on some stuff under the car. All right, so here's what we've got. Um, I'm lucky enough to have another Mark IV in the shop right now because I wanted to move this expansion tank as far over to the passenger side as I could and still have relatively good access to the hood hinge mechanism. So when that goes in, we'll still have access to the bolts and uh, the, car the carriage bolts and the nuts that go on that, that hinge system. So I measured over and I don't have it on there now, but I had a, a strip of tape across this top cross brace and then I marked uh, I think it was five inches from the edge of the chassis over and that's where I wanted the corner of this expansion tank to be and so then what I did is I made myself a bracket out of some 090 aluminum and basically I just took a piece that was three inches wide by six inches long and cut it you know as square as I could on the bandsaw and then I just kind of uh, um, went back and trued up the edges filed it all smooth and then I put a break in it right here in the center so that I could lower this tank down far enough so that we wouldn't have any hood clearance issues right here and you can see how much this thing moves right now and that's because I need a, a, a brace on the bottom but um, I got it all mounted and then what I did is I drilled some holes through the cross support here and I put some 5 16 stainless button head screws all the way through there so there's nylock nuts on the bottom there's nylock nuts on the bottom of these they're two different lengths these are shorter than these I think these are three quarter or one inch these are inch and a half and so I've got that all in and mounted so now that that's in I think what I'm going to concentrate my time and energy on is getting the lower radiator hose in and I think we've got a solution for the upper hose. So on the upper hose, I started searching on um, the forum, the Factory 5 forum, and I started searching on uh, different Facebook pages to see what people had done for this. Now, a lot of times there is a aftermarket solution for some of this stuff. You know, you know Mark over at Breeze Automotive has some... Uh, uh, tubes that can be used in conjunction with uh, rubber hoses that he sells and then um, there's uh, another company that makes those as well and they have stuff for the coyote engine but I just wasn't seeing anything that um, one was reasonably priced and two that kind of fit our need because what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep or I'm trying to keep um, I'll let the owner speak up for himself if he wants to um, trying to keep this as OEM 
in appearance under the hood as we can. I mean, there are some blingy things that we've done, like the uh, the brake reservoirs and stuff like that. But I'm trying not to make the underside of the engine real showy. Um, I, I, I want to keep it, you know, uh, you know, kind of grassroots. You know, the engine, you know, is is being installed just the way it is type of a look. And so, what I found was that there is a 2015 through 2017. F-150 hose that was for a 5 liter Coyote engine that was an option on the F-150. Now, I've also read that we may have to put another notch on the inside of the coolant hose in order to clock it in the right position that we need because right now, because we have this power steering pump with this belt that's right in that area, I'm afraid that we, might, uh, we may rub on that uh, that that hose in where it clips in and uh i'm not too comfortable having this uh this belt self clearance the bottom of the uh the uh the coolant hose for us so we'll see if we can't just do that we'll put a notch in in it and it it, it actually has a uh, uh like a uh, an o-ring on the inside of the hose when it snaps on to seal it so it shouldn't matter which orientation it is, is in as long as it has something so that it doesn't spin because the clip that goes on it will keep it from coming off we just don't want it to spin around so i think i'm going to send a link to that part to the car owner and then we'll see about getting that hopefully in the next couple of days but in the meantime i'm working on a hose for the bottom that's going to use the factory five supplied rubber hose I think one of the older style base kit hoses that was supplied with the, at least with the Mark 1s through the Mark 3s. And then um, probably a piece of aluminum tubing in the center of it to join those two hoses. Something similar to what we, we did on a couple of the cooling hoses on both Ed's car and on Mike's car. So I'm going to work on that probably tomorrow and I'll bring you back then. All right, everybody, next day I am working under the car today. I figured I'd start on some of the cooling system. So the radiator hoses and all that kind of stuff. And what I decided to start with is the lower radiator hose. Now, Factory 5 gives you a hose and from the Gen 3 Coyote instructions that uh, they have on their site. I'm going to give you guys a little tip all the instructions for factory fives parts and assemblies are on their sister website which is factory five parts.com so you go over to their parts page and that's of course where you buy your t-shirts and, and any replacement parts that you're looking for for a factory five vehicle and on the top header It'll, 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 there, there's a bunch of different options. You know, you can scroll to Roadster, Coop, stuff like that. And then it'll say instructions. And if you click on that, it'll bring up all the PDF files for all of the different options that they offer for the cars. And one of those is the Gen 3 Coyote instructions. So I have a copy that I downloaded on my computer for that first Gen 3 that we did. And they also have have I think the Gen 2 on there. I don't know if there's a Gen 1 on there, but the Gen 2 and the Gen Gen, uh, Gen 2 and the Gen 1 are pretty close. Anyways, so in those instructions it says that this hose that they provide you, you hook it up on one end to basically the thermostat housing up here. So that's the thermostat housing. Right? So you hook it up on that end, the 90 degree end, and then on this other end, you're just supposed to connect it to the radiator. Well, as you can see, here, I'll pull this one out of the way. As you can see, it ain't long enough. And it's right underneath the cross tube here, so it's not going to go any higher. There's no way I'm going to snake it through there. I can't snake it above the power steering rack because then it's going to be into the, the hoses or the uh, the lines that, that uh, feed fluid to the, to the, um, the rack. So... I don't know what world they're living in that this hose just fits. <laughs> so what I've done is I've gone back to the drawing board and this right here is a hose that they supplied with the base kits because at, at in the beginning there was only a base kit. 
for like uh, Mark 1 through Mark 3. And this hose, and I don't know if I'd have, I, I took the part number off of it because I put it in the file for the owner. But this hose gets you this angle to get onto the radiator outlet up there and then below the sway bar. So I'm going to use this. I'm probably going to cut it about here. And then I'm going to cut this hose probably somewhere about here. And then what I'm going to do is like we did on Michael's car, I'm going to take, this is aluminum tubing. We use stainless on Michael's, but I have some of this aluminum tubing. And you can see I've already got a bead rolled on one side. I'm going to put this in between the two ends of my hose and make a cool tube. <laughs> I don't know if that name is copyrighted. So let's just say we're, we're going to make a cooling tube. A little play on words. So I'm going to get working on that. Um, and I will bring you back just as soon as I have probably it mocked up. I don't know that I'm going to get it all clamped into place, but I will at least try to get it. All the pieces cut, the tube cut, the tube bead rolled on both ends and kind of in there. And then, uh, it'll just be a matter of me coming back and getting everything in place. Then what I'm probably going to do is lower the car down and then take a look at what the upper radiator hose is going to look like because I brought those down as well and I think we're going to do kind of the same thing we're going to, going to do a combination of the aluminum tubing and the tube or the hoses that factory five supplies and see if we can't get something mocked together up on the top as well all right here is what we ended up with so we've got that Oh, what do you want to call it? The Mark 1 through Mark 3 hose that uh, you used to get with the uh, base kit. You may still get this. I don't know. Um, I got one of these, and I've just been holding on to the part number all these years with my Mark 3 kit. So um, it's this nice S-Bend, and it doesn't matter if you have the older AFCO-style Factory 5 radiator that comes straight out here or whether it's the angled one. You can manipulate that uh, hose enough to get it to come back this way. Now... It's awfully close to the sway bar and it will it will knock but since we don't have any coolant and no heat these these uh, hoses are actually going to relax once we put some heat in them so I'm tempted to let it go through a couple of heat cycles before we decide exactly what to do as far as strapping it we may have to do nothing we may be able to just leave it it may just settle down here and just, uh, you know, just want to stay where it is. And if you look up here, I've got nice gentle bends and everything. I don't have any uh, kinks in the hose. So I think we're going to be good. Now, a guy could uh, come back here later. Now, I just put a brush finish on this aluminum. It looks, it's, it looks sharp. But, you know, if a guy had some time and he wanted to do a little bit of polishing on that, it would polish up really nice and you could have a little bit of bling on the car. I think we're going to stay with the the brushed or the satin look for right now uh when i talked to the owner last night he seemed good with this so we're going to order another piece of this to go on the upper hose as soon as i figure out what we're going to do there now i have not put the clamp on the upper hose yet so it's like right here it's just loose but that's because i got it up in the air and i can't reach it from the ground here so i'm trying to get as much stuff done while i'm down here as i possibly can so i'm going to go ahead and i think i may put a weather pack connector on this fan i think we're going to run the fan directly off of the ford control pack wiring so i am going to take this stuff and cap it off and push it inside of the wire loom here and then we'll run an independent line down here to power the fan so i can go ahead and put a weather pack on that while i'm up here in the air i did finish the power steering lines um, as far as getting them tightened up so they're all squared away over here. I just need to find a way to strap them, some type of uh, strap to keep the two uh, hoses together going all the way back, just to neaten it up a little bit. But we're moving right along. So I'm gonna keep working at it. I've still got another, oh, I've probably got a good hour to go before uh, I've gotta go inside and feed the dogs tonight. So it's hot. I may or may not come back out here after dinner, but who knows? A um, lot of work to do on this car, and I want to keep pushing forward. I've got to get Jim's car back up. I'll lift here soon, too. So work's just piling up. I'll get back to you when i got something more to show you. 
All right, everybody, next day. What I'm working on tonight is trying to get some measurements and some hose sizes for all of the supplemental hoses that we're going to be putting on the car. Now that I've got the lower hose in place, and I know it's going to work, other than maybe a support at some point, um, I think we're good on that. And so I'm waiting on the upper hose. Uh, I should see that in the next couple of days. But I think what I'm going to do on the, all these supplemental hoses is see if I can't go on to the O'Reilly's Auto Parts website with the diameter of the hose, the length of the hose, and the configuration. I can just scroll through pictures and see if I can find something that's going to work for each of these hose locations. So for instance, we're going to try to take this outlet right here that comes off of the front of the expansion tank and we're going to try to get something with a 90 right here that will take us towards the radiator and then over to our brass fitting that we have here. Now if that means that I can get something on here with a 90 and then just gently loop this around and then into that fitting I'd be happy with that. The um, the next toes we're going to need, same diameter, I think these are going to be 3 8 is going to be this one here. Now this one here has to go straight back to this steam port vent here. And so what I'm going to be looking for here is something with a 90 degree bend on it that is going to be straight for at least this 15 or so inches here. And so I'm going to see if I can't find something for that. Now this, this lower one that comes out of the bottom, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the camera in there. That's the tough thing. So let me see if I can get the camera down in here for you all. So this port right here comes off at an angle towards the driver's side of the car. This is a 5 8 nipple on the bottom. And that has to connect to right here. Let me get the camera back. So it has to connect right here. And that's going to that's gonna, um, take coolant and flow into the, the surge tank. The top one here is for the heater. This one is going to connect over to, oh, right here. It's going to go over to right here. Um, it's not going to go there. Both of these are, are, are heater hoses. And so one of them is going to go into one side of the heater. The other one over here is going to go to go into the other side of the heater. Um, and then we're in line of that, we're going to have that control valve that is a four-way control valve, which I haven't shown you yet. Let me see if I can dig that thing up and I'll bring you back and, and I'll show you that thing because I think we're going to mount that somewhere over here uh, and uh, real estate is just so so quickly diminishing under the hood of this thing it's 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 unbelievable uh, we've got a lot of stuff to put in and just no room so let me bring you back I'm going to look for that control valve and then uh, I'll show you that and then I'm probably going to head in for the evening and see if I can't start hunting down hoses and whatnot and hopefully pick some of those up tomorrow all right this is it now i've got the wiring pigtail plugged into it i've yet to call this company to um, ask them about the wiring diagram on this but i'm going to get around to that because um, they actually have a controller that uses a rheostat that will bypass um you know anywhere from you know zero percent to a hundred percent of coolant through this valve and we're just basically looking for an on off solution so i don't know whether i'm just going to connect voltage to it or whether i'm going to have to have voltage and then another supplied voltage to open and close it but regardless this is our four-way valve so we're going to have i think these two these two um ports here are going to be our heater in and out from the engine block and these two ports on this side will be our heater in and out to the actual heater core itself and then uh, once we get that in line then of course I'll have to wire it along with our wiper motor our heater blower motor and all that kind of stuff but you know we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um, I think that's gonna do it for tonight guys I'm uh, getting a little tired and it's just about dinner time, so I'm going to head in, and I will catch up with you all tomorrow. All right, everybody. Sometimes this is all you're going to get. This uh, I started on this bracket when I got home from work today, and uh, I got it just about cleaned 
cleaned up or, or finished. I still have to drill a hole in the top of it and into the surge tank to uh, fasten it to the bottom of the surge tank and then I'm going to have to drill a hole in the bottom here to line up with the cross brace underneath the car and probably trim the bracket. Once that's done, I'll go back, I'll clean this thing, I'll use a Scotch-Brite or a, a, a buffing pad to uh, put some grain on it and get rid of all of the um, identifying marks on it, file it, clean it up, and then it'll be ready to put on. So, so you understand where this is going. There is a bracket right here on the bottom of the surge tank. And so I'm gonna drill a hole in the back of it right here. And then that surge tank bracket is gonna come down to right here. And it is going to bolt into the cross member here. And that's gonna take all of this, this movement out of that surge tank. Um, I've seen some guys mount uh, a bracket to the fan. The problem I have with that is that the fan is attached to the radiator. And of course, the radiator is on a hinged bracket on the top. The bracket on the bottom can move as well. And so the radiator is going to move around. And so I would just as soon have that surge tank securely mounted to the chassis and independent of the radiator. But uh, hey, you do it your way, I'll do it with mine. But uh, that's all I'm going to get done for tonight. Um, believe it or not, that, that bracket took me a little over, what, an hour and a half? To, uh, to fit and cut and trim and, and get it all ready to where now it's ready to mount to the surge tank. But now I have to pull the surge tank completely off and then mount it to the surge tank. Once it's in place, then I can figure out where my hole in the chassis is going to be. But uh, that's it for tonight. All right, everybody. Get my belly past the ladder. It's the next day. Still working on the cooling system. But I'm at a standstill. I've got, uh, uh, I'm waiting on a few hoses. I'm waiting on the upper um, rad hose. And um, we ordered some supplemental hoses for the, um, I don't know, bypass hoses, I guess you'd call them, uh, for the search tank. So that's about a, this is about as far as I'm going to be able to go on the cooling system right now. I am going to start mapping out where all the heater hoses and everything are going to go. I've got one of the adapters on right now. Um, it's just got it kind of sitting there to figure out my path this way because we've got a cover that we purchased. We got a Gen 1, Gen 2 cover, engine cover that's going on here. And so I've got to kind of set that in place and see how much room we're going to have to get our cooling ho coolant hoses underneath or to the side of that engine cover because we've got our four-way valve that's going to go over here somewhere. So I'm just trying to map all this stuff out and uh, see where it's going to go. I've also got to get the air intake 90 down from upstairs and see where we're going to be with all that to make sure that we're not going to run any hoses into that as well. But the surge tank is mounted. We now have our bracket. I'll see if I can get you guys in down there so you can see our bracket right there. And it is mounted to the um, cross brace, the X brace in front. You can see there is a screw right there, right here. And uh, that's holding it nice and firm in place. You can see there's hardly any movement in that at all right now. It does have a little bit of an angle. Um, I'm going to see once we get to the rough fitment of the body if that's going to work or if I have to lower it. If I have to lower it, what I'll probably do is put a slot in where the bottom hole is on the bracket, which will allow this to go down a little bit and level it out. But uh, I kind of like the way it, it, it it's kind of the same angle as the, uh, the frame tube right here. So I'm tempted to leave it if it's going to fit because it just kind of looks right. I'm afraid if I lower it down too much, it's going to look like like it's it's leaning back and so right now it looks like it's right so i think i may just leave it there um so we're just playing a waiting game as far as the cooling tubes that doesn't mean we're not continuing work on the car we're still doing some of the wiring and we'll probably take this one off the lift here in probably the next day or two um it's me getting off the ladder um and get Jim's car back up on the lift. I really want to get uh, going on his oil pan and some of the other stuff that we've got waiting for his car. 
um, the, the radiator. We got the radiator sitting over here and I'd like to get that put back in and get the coolant back in the car and get some oil back in the car so we can start it up because it hasn't been started in three months. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to get that car mobile. I know the brakes work now. It'd be nice to take it around the block and bed the brakes. So I want to get some work done on Jim's car and then, uh, We've got another project coming into the shop in a couple of weeks, which is just going to sit here for the time being. And I, I you know, I hate to say that the, you know, any project is going to sit here, but um, this was just a logistical issue. We could get the car out here in a certain time frame, and so rather than waiting and missing our window of opportunity, it was just better to get the car out here. And I told the uh, the customer who's bringing the car out, "I'll make room for it." And so that's what we're doing. Um, but I think that's going to do it on the cooling tubes for now, or the cooling system. And uh, we'll update you guys with another video with all the rest of the stuff and show you how we did it. And maybe even pr provide you with some of the part numbers. Now, for the most part, we just did part numbers from people that have already done Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 Coyote builds. So we're just going off a list that we previously had. But if any of you guys need any of those part numbers, I can show you where to go to get those part numbers. Or I can provide the part numbers for you. So... I think that's, uh, that's it for today, guys. All right, I want to thank everyone for watching. If you're enjoying the content, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that stuff. Comment. Let us know what we're doing wrong because uh, it's the Internet, and uh, everybody does everything wrong on the Internet, right? So uh, we'll see you guys all next time. Have a great day.